Good afternoon, and God bless you. Uh, we've had some requests um, that uh, we make known our needs. Um, different ones out there listening have told us that we should uh, let our listeners know if we have need. And uh, as a minister, being on the road, um, staying in hotels, and just being on the road, you know, it's uh, it, there are expenses. And first, I'd like to just thank everyone that has been supporting um, our travel, uh, our expenses on the road. Um, and just to let you know, we we have been able to um, get the funds to take care of last night and tonight is taken care of. But if we're able to go ahead and uh, take care of um, a whole week up front, then we can save considerably. So every night is like $60 plus tax. But if we book the hotel for a week at a time, then it's only $40 uh, a night. Uh, plus tax. So it's quite a big difference in the price. Um, and so we're letting you know because we've had those that have reached out to us and told us that we should let you all know what our needs are. Now, if everybody did a little bit, then not, you know, one person would have to do everything. So if just everybody would work together uh, in, in share something, then we would have what we need um, to meet uh, meet the, uh, the, the need. So, uh, today I'd like to share with you what's on my heart, um, and I know that the Lord is really uh, helping me to understand where we are. Um, and what we, as believers in Christ, uh, should be doing. Um, it's imperative. Now, I, I use that word a lot, and I hope it doesn't ever become redundant, but I do use that word a lot. But it is imperative, folks, that we keep our eyes on Jesus. It's absolutely imperative. That's not something that's just superficial. We must learn to keep our eyes on Jesus. Now, the Lord has done something very supernatural for us to help us to keep our eye, uh, our eyes uh, stayed upon the Lord, to keep our eyes stuck, glued on Him. And in the book of Revelation, uh, when Jesus is speaking to the Laodicean church, he says to them, um, Anoint your eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Now, when I did a study on this word eye salve, it not only has to do with an anointing, but it also has to do with a glue. So, what the Lord is saying is, I will give you something that not only will anoint your eyes to see, but I will also give you something that will cause you to be, keep your eyes glued on me. To keep your eyes glued on the Lord. Folks, we need God's help. Supernatural help to keep our eyes stayed upon the Lord. Now, I will tell you this, folks. I didn't always keep my eyes on Jesus. But I will tell you, when the Lord gives you this eye salve, literally, it's like glue. And I don't care what you go through. I don't care what storm you face. It's like you can't take your eyes off Jesus. That's something God does for us. That's something that comes from the Lord. That's not something that uh, 
that you can acquire uh, any other way. You must receive that from the Lord. It's not something you can train yourself or discipline yourself. No, this is something supernaturally. Supernaturally, the Lord does in our lives, and we need it. We need everything else on that list, too, but we also need our eyes to be anointed with eye salve that we may see. Uh, Folks, we are in the storm, and we're feeling the remnants of that storm now. We haven't seen the fullness of this storm that's coming, not even close. Uh, It's going to increase. It's going to get worse and worse. But we must keep our eyes upon the Lord. Now, you all know the story how Peter got his eyes off of Jesus. And what happened? He began to sink. Amen? This will always happen when you take your eyes off Jesus. You will begin to sink. Now, Peter was uh, doing just fine until he took his eyes off Jesus. But do you realize the same storm, the same storm, it didn't change. It wasn't a different storm. It was the same storm. The same storm that Peter began to sink in was the same storm that he was walking on the water or walking in the storm. Same storm. So it wasn't the storm that changed. Amen? It wasn't his circumstances that changed. It was Peter's perspective that changed. Amen? Because he took his eyes off the one that gave him the word. He gave him a word. Listen, if Jesus gives you a word, you can do it. If Jesus Christ gives you a word, it's signed, sealed, and settled in heaven. Folks, listen. You can walk on it. You know how they say you can take it to the bank? Well, you can walk on the word of God. Peter proved that. Amen? The same word that the Lord spoke the worlds into existence, let there be, and there was, is the same word that Peter was walking on. Same word. You and I must get a word from God. We have to. I don't care what your circumstances, it doesn't matter what the circumstances in your life. If you get a word from the Lord, that's the key, getting a word from God. If the doctors say you're going to die, get a word from Jesus says you're not going to die, and you won't die. Amen? You find out you got cancer, get a word from Jesus. You're healed. Get a word. Get his word on it. Amen? Amen? The devil runs his mouth all the time, but Jesus always has the final word. Amen. Jesus Christ always has the final word. A lot of things going on today, people saying a lot of things, but Jesus has the final word. And things might be taking place in your life where you might be going through certain things, experiencing certain things, and wonder... Is it ever going to change? Well, remember, Jesus has the final word. Folks, if we spent more time getting a word from God, we'd see a whole lot more victories in our life. You and I are sometimes in situations that are absolutely impossible. But nothing is impossible with God. Amen. You need to get a word from God. Now, I cannot emphasize enough to you. It is imperative that you and I not only get a word from God in this hour, but that we keep our eyes on him who gives us his word. Amen. Now, Jesus is the word. 
So the essence that comes from him is the same substance. Unfailing. Cannot fail. Incorruptible. Cannot be corrupted. Are you listening to Brother Joseph today? Get a word from God. His word will not, cannot fail. The words of man will fail you. Your own words will fail you. Your own promises will fail you. But he will never fail. He cannot fail. His word cannot fail. What he promised, he's well able to perform. The word that goes out of his mouth, the scripture says, will not return unto him void. It will accomplish where he sent it. The world thinks today that they can just speak things into existence. They think they're creators. Well, you and I know that you and I can't speak into existence and you and I can't create. But we can get a word from God, amen, and God will speak that thing into existence. The Lord will make bring in things uh, as though uh, things that are not as though they are. You and I can't do that. The world's being taught ever since the internet that we're creators. We're not creators. We'll never be creators. You and I don't create. Amen. We can make something from that which has already been created, but out of nothing? No. You and I can't do that. And the sooner that we come to this acknowledgement, the sooner that we're going to realize we need to get a word from God. We realize we need His help. Amen. You and I cannot bring things into being out of nothing. But God can. Out of nowhere, out of nothing, He can bring things. He can create. Folks, Two loaves or a few loaves of, and, and a few fish. And Jesus multiplied it out of nowhere. You know, they say today that the Fed, the, that the Federal Reserve, they say that they print money out of thin air because of the, uh, the digital age that we are in, that they can just, you know, put digits print money out of thin air, that money that doesn't even exist. And you and I know that that's not creative. That's deception. But when God does it, folks, listen, out of nothing, out of nowhere, amen, praise God, You don't have to see it with your eyes to believe it. Like this generation, the world says, oh, I'll believe it when I can see it. No. If God said it, that's enough. Did you hear what I said? If the Lord said it, that should be enough. His word is true. His promises are yea and amen to them that believe. Are his promises yea and amen to everyone? No. To them that believe. Hallelujah. I've told you this in the past, and I'll I'll say it again. You and I cannot move mountains. Go try to speak to a mountain, and it's not going anywhere. But if God gives you a word, that mountain literally has to get up and get out and move. Are you listening? We're talking about keeping our eyes on Jesus. You can't do that if you're leaning to your own understanding. You can't do that if you... Hey, if Peter thought he could walk on the water, he never would have asked Jesus to let him walk on the water. If he... If Peter thought, I can just get out of this boat and walk to Jesus, he would have done it. But no, what did Peter say? Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. Amen? Peter didn't just get out of the boat and start walking. He he requested. He petitioned the Lord. Lord, if that's you out there, bid me to come out to you on the water. We need... 
to request. We need to ask. We have not because we ask not. Now, friends, it doesn't matter what your condition is. doesn't matter your situation. doesn't matter if the doctor has told you that you only have a few days to live. Get a word from God. Get a word. Hallelujah. No power in this world or the world to come can alter or change his word. Now you, you and I need to get this in our spirit. We need to realize that when God says something, there's nothing that can change his word. There's no power. There is no power greater than God's power. When the Lord speaks, it happens. It comes to being. The idea today that everything just came out of this big bang. No. God said, let there be. Now man, in his finite mind, he can't, he can't grasp that. Amen? Your leading scientists today, they can't grasp that. That there's a God that speaks into existence. But yet they'll have all their ideas that we evolved out of rock, came from apes. And then the hypocrites in Hollywood, you know, coming out with movies, trying to produce things out of nothing trying to act like they're gods and they're super gods and demigods and all this. But they can't believe that there's truly a creator. They can't, they can't see it. No, it's not that they can't see it altogether. The Bible says the God of this world has blinded their minds. Did you hear what I just said? Those today that can't see the truth, it's because the God of this world has blinded their minds. They can't see because they've been blinded. How does the devil blind people? With lies, with deception, with the false light? Are you listening, folks? We're dealing with a generation that's blinded by the God of this world, by Satan. And unless the glorious gospel should shine unto them, they'll never be saved. Amen. No, it's not that they can't see the truth because they don't want to see the truth. It's because that there is an enemy that's keeping them from seeing the truth. The scripture says, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Amen? In order for the light of God to shine out of our hearts and for people to see the light of God shining out of us, we've got to keep our eyes on Jesus. Amen? We've got to keep our eyes on the Lord. And then that light, I've even been told, Brother Joseph, there's a light emanating from you. I've been told by my childhood friends, there's light emanating from you after I got saved. I've had people say to me, there's a light shining out of your eyes. Well, that's not my own light. That's him. That's him. Amen? Why does his light shine out? Because we keep our eyes stayed upon him. Do we always keep our eyes? It's getting easier. I'm not saying it's always uh, keep our eyes on the Lord. No, there's times where the storm, things come and we get our distracted and we get our eyes off of Jesus and we get our eyes on our problem. We get our eyes on the situation. We do it. We all do it. But if we will seek the Lord, He will provide for us ISAV to keep our eyes stayed upon Him. Amen? To keep our eyes glued on Him. 
Praise God. We must keep our eyes on the Lord. In this hour, Satan is doing everything he can to get you and I distracted, to take our eyes off Jesus. Praise the Lord. I know the storm is just beginning to kick up. It's just beginning. We're just seeing the beginning of this thing. Nothing comparing to what's coming. If we can't keep our eyes on Jesus now, what are we going to do when the storm really gets here? We better learn to keep our eyes on Him now. Amen? Praise the Lord. Well, God bless you, and have a wonderful day. Uh, Again, if you'd like to help us with our expenses, you can go to overcomingthedragon.org. Um, and if you would like to, on an ongoing basis, I think they give you an option where you can choose to uh, have it taken out of your account on a monthly basis, whatever. I'm not sure how that works, but uh, they keep changing things all the time, so I'm not sure. Now, if you do have a PayPal account, um, you don't have to go through the donation link. You can just use our personal email address and... Also, they, they won't charge either side if because if you go through the donation link, they take out a certain percentage of that. But if you have a PayPal account and you want to go direct from PayPal to PayPal, I think they're calling it Smart Connect now, um, then you can uh, just use our personal email, Joseph B. Skinner, number one, at gmail.com. And I think I will eventually... Uh, come up with a Gmail address that for the ministry as well. But for now, it's Joseph B. Skinner, S-K-I-N-N-E-R, number one, at gmail.com. And if you send uh, money to that email address, then it will go direct and it, they won't take out anything. Now remember to send it friends and family. You can't send it out uh, any other way because if you send it any other way, then they will take out a percentage of that. But for now, PayPal is not charging either side when you send something friends and family. You think they would do that on donations, but they don't. Maybe because they figure people that do donations write things off. I don't know. We're not 501c3. This ministry is not 501c3. Um, So... That's what I would do if I was on your end. I would uh, send directly if I had a PayPal account. And if you don't have a PayPal account, then you can just send through the donation link. We appreciate so much your support of this ministry. We, uh, we hope that we're being a blessing to you and sharing the truth, the gospel. Uh, I know it's not easy to find the truth today, to find the you know, clarity of the gospel of Jesus Christ today. So we want to thank you for being laborers with us. Amen. Together, we'll work together. One more soul might be saved. Bring one more convert to Jesus. One more person to come into the ark of safety while there's still time. Amen. Remember to share Jesus. Amen. And you don't always have to share Jesus with words. Just a smile sometimes. Just a handshake. Just a nod of your... of your. Just A lot of times it's just your attitude. Now if it's someone you're not going to ever see again, you don't think you'll ever see him, share Jesus with them and share maybe some scripture. Or share something with them that they can take with them. But if it's somebody you see all the time, sometimes just a smile, friend. Just a smile is all they need. Just a nod. Just a good attitude. Amen? Praise the Lord. Be a light to this generation. Let your light so shine before men they may see your good works, your honest works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen? Praise the Lord. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't ever take your eyes off Jesus. Amen? Praise the Lord. God bless you.